Welcome to the first ever episode of Warhammer, your weekly Warhammer podcast where we ponder news and topics from the last week and most importantly, have a good laugh. This week we take a look at the newest Old World reveals for Wave 2, we give our top ever Warhammer kits, we'll be playing Warhammer 20 questions and much, much more to come. But joining me, my weekly co-hosts uh, to come for however long we manage to do this for... Uh, the happiest wargamer on YouTube and the bearer of mead, <laughs> it's Ben, <laughs> aka 90% Geek. Uh, oh! oh <laughs> yeah, right. uh, everybody who's listening or watching to this won't know, we just had about three attempts for that opening, so I'm really glad that went uh, that went smoothly into that. Um, and of course, our third musketeer, we have, they call him the Hobby Waffler of the North. It's Simon, aka Hobby Waffle. How are you doing, Hello. Simon? Uh, and I believe it's uh, you your, your first ever reveal of the face as well. So I've never been on uh, actually. On yeah, Congress I think it is yet. actually. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I did. I was on my Warhammer Fest review video, uh, and I've, I've put it on Twitter here and there. But yeah, it's the first actual video where I've got my ugly mug on camera. Yeah, so awesome stuff. Uh, looking really looking forward to all the stuff we've got on the the podcast this week. Um, we've got just uh, one thing to settle though before um, we do go into a bit of uh, housekeeping uh, for this week's episode, given it's our first, and that's uh, a question that we're going to ask any new guest uh, that comes on the podcast every week. And given that this is our first ever episode, lads, I thought we'd uh, we'd do it ourselves. And that is, um, if you could only pick one kit or box to take with you on a desert island, if you were stranded, what would it be that you could take with you? Of course, you'd have, let's hope, the glue, whatever you'd need to actually do the kit <laughs> as the well. Pens. That'd be pretty depressing. Yeah. That'd be it's pretty like hard. a Twilight Zone episode. Where, Finally, I have time now! <laughs> no glue or paint! You have to twist twist the parts off the sprue. That's I've it. that nightmare. <laughs> so we thought we'd Who's open this up, and guys, uh, in the comments as well, uh, whoever's listening, viewing, uh, do leave your suggestions, uh, whatever yours would be as well. But uh, let's go with you, Sai, first, since you're on the top right there. What would yours be? One kit to take away to a desert island. Mm. That's a tough one. Um, I'm torn between two. Either a, a complete sealed Titan's, Legion, uh, Titan's Legion's box mm. with a, you know, the Mega Gargans, that's the thing I would want, or... Grom the Paunch, because that's one of my favourite ever kits. It was in the first White Dwarf I ever got, so it was one of the kits as I was opening the pages I, I just fell in love with. So that or Titan Legions sealed. That should nice. keep me going for a while, I think. <laughs> it would, actually. It would. At least it's a big set, so that would keep you going for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe take it, you know, do a bit of it every, like, you know, month or so that you're stranded on this island, I'd imagine. <laughs> yeah. uh, ben, what are you thinking? Well, it? And you'd have something to read as well, because you'd have the rule book in there as well. So you'd have that's true, yeah. That's true, yeah. And yeah. if you run out of toilet paper, you know, you've got something soft. <laughs> oh, controversial. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ben, um, I, I'm expecting yours to have a lot of reading material in and after that. Oh, uh, no, no, not at all. No, I, uh, in terms of my Desert Island box set, I've given oh, this I some see. thought, and I think if I was stranded on Desert Island with an you know, unlimited supply of paint and glue and time, it is the Mighty Empire set. Not the, the original, which was all kind of cardboard tiles, as cool as that was, but the plastic set that they released in kind of the, the early 2000s with all I the different see. kind of hexagonal plastic tiles so you could build an entire map. Because I could, A, I'd finally have time to actually just sit down and build like an entire you know, island map and, uh, and glue and paint it all together. But B, I could use it to map the island that I was on so I could kind of ah, use it to clever. make a scaled map of the island I was on. I think it'd be really useful for that regard. That's very cool. Ben put way more thought into this than me. I just <laughs> I just literally chose my favourite. <laughs> 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 and literally so that I could remember what it used to be like to play Warhammer Weekly and to build my own stuff that I love. Um, I've gone for Battle of Skull Pass. That's my favourite set of all time. Um, I, later on in the show, we've got something else coming. Um, as I said at the beginning there, the... I'm sure these things may pop up again. We'll see. Um, but uh, that would be my choice. I just love that set. Lots to build in it as well. Um, so that could keep me going, I suppose. And they're press but, fit uh, models as well. So you wouldn't have to worry about gluing them too much. Yeah. yeah. Point, no, that's yeah. actually true. Yeah, it's very true. I wouldn't necessarily... I could maybe get away with uh, without too much glue. So if I ran out, there you go. <laughs> 
But uh, thanks for that, lads. Otherwise, I've got a little bit of housekeeping uh, before we get on to uh, our news topics for the week. And because it's our first episode, guys, um, you may be new to the channel. We've renamed to Morehammer, of course, and we are known as the Morehammer Podcast. We are available, of course, on YouTube with video and audio. But we do have a new Spotify, uh, which all of which I'm going to talk about now. Links will be below. Uh, I have a Linktree link, actually, very... Uh, you know, uh, updated <laughs> uh, to everything that you'll need. So that'll be down below in the comments as well. Uh, and the new Spotify uh, version of the podcast will be audio only if you just want that. If you're getting a cheeky listen into one of the podcasts that we do uh, at work or something like that, it's a better way of doing it, I suppose. We've got a new TikTok channel. Uh, we're going to be doing some shorts from each podcast. You can uh, go over and check that out. Uh, I'll be putting up the shorts on YouTube as well. We've got the discord channel up and running as well uh we want you guys to be getting involved over there um ben and Sai are already over there along with myself uh having a chat between ourselves at the moment really but uh yeah come along get more of you guys awesome, in there awesome nice miniatures get yes the discord. that's the main thing we've got uh we want you guys i'm gonna over the show we've got other reasons for you to be going over to the discord so we'll get into that much later on or as the show goes on uh the last thing just to cover before we get into the the talk for this week is just that we have a prize giveaway for the first episode a celebration prize giveaway i'll give more details as to what that is and how you can take part later in the show um but i think we'll get into what we've been into for the last week lads uh with our hobbying um do you want me to start or do one of you two want to go or, or are you going to put me to shame or take it I away gonna, are you sure you you to, yeah, yeah, i run up to quite a lot so i don't know if it's gonna be <laughs> bad for you guys but all right i'll go first then so um friday night uh usually my gaming night if i can get a game in uh i did get a game in with my space marine army i've got just over a thousand points at the moment uh before christmas um that was kind of my end of last year project um it's a new 40k army and i decided to go with my ultramarines um and i got a thousand point game in against uh, a friend of mine who played his um chaos traitor legion guard which was very cool he's got a converted army um what i'll actually do guys if you want to check it out i'll put a picture of it here in the in the discord channel and you can check out his army it's very cool he ran them as uh, just uh, astra militarum um but he's obviously converted them very fun game who, who managed to win it in the end nice. um but it's all about the fun and it, and it was a good game um and i always like playing against the converted army but uh other than that in terms of model building over my last weekend i finally cracked into the tomb kings box set lads hey, <laughs> hey. finally got there <laughs> um so what the plan is friday night next week will be my first game of old world as well um, Ooh, nice. so next week i'll be able to give you you know a bit of uh, an update on uh, what i've been doing with old world because i know ben you've played i don't think you have yet so i have you've managed to get a game in yet. i've played a demo game at warhammer world but i've not had a proper game outside of that okay i've played one game so far and it was very much kind of a head buried in the rule book what what, what does this do what does that rule do again <laughs> yeah. rather than uh, you know actually strategic like that. clash how'd you, work, rules. how'd you work out the combat result again it's are you sure that's right oh, he had combat, a trumpet. After no, no. combat stuff that's, that's what i'm dreading the edition rule <laughs> yeah how many ranks did he have yeah yeah yes all that got got all that to look forward to so it's still great um though. I have a friend who also has a Tomb King army painted from the old editions already, um, who is very kindly going to lend me his painted models, and we're going to team up yeah. um, so they can help teach me the new rules. And we're going to, um, and I'm going, because he hasn't got the new zombie dragon with the Tomb King on top, I mm -hmm. promised that I would get that built and painted before next Friday. So I ah. built it. <laughs> I built it, and it oh, took me all it. weekend to build it. That's so I'm going to have to try and paint it in my evenings this week, as well as getting this podcast done. So that's my hobby. Get a bit of Wraith Bone, slap some Skeleton Horde on it. You're exactly, most Ben. Bit of a that's totally rush. not why I went for Tomb Kings. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I went for Tomb Kings. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and with that's that, we'll go on to Sai with what he's been doing, because I know you've been working on your Tomb Kings. Yeah, so no gaming for me, unfortunately, sadly, but I have been working on Tomb Kings, so I've been doing all the undercoating this week, well, this weekend, I should say. So I've got pretty much all the um, skeleton horse archers and the skeleton horsemen undercoated. I've got the chariots undercoated as well, um, and I'm just still building the, the, the skeleton on foot. Uh, also, doing a few space screens as well, working on white consoles, but no gaming. 
the only gaming I've been doing actually is playing Helldivers 2. That's took up quite a bit of my time um, on PS5. Uh, it's really good. It is basically Starship Troopers, but that's another matter. Yeah, I've I've heard it is very very similar to to that. Yeah, Starship Troopers, loving that. Um, it's meant to be quite popular. It's doing quite well that game, so I, I will have to check it out myself. But uh, cheers, Cy. Ben, what have you been up to over the last weekend? So I haven't gotten a game in in the last week. I think my last game was just over a week ago. I got a game of 10th edition in with one of my friends who kind of very kindly walked me through much of the changes to 10th edition with me kind of sat there scratching my head going... Was that your first well, one, Ben? What, well, a second, but to be fair, my, my first one was not very long after it came out on my birthday and it was at the end of a long day of playing lots of Necromunda and eating far too much tasty food and drinking an awful lot. So by the time we played 40k, I don't remember most of it. I remember that my orcs went up the board, but I can't tell you what happened after that, to be honest. Aside from eventually, I went, no, I'm too tired, I'm going to bed. So this was a first kind of <laughs> sober game of 40k, no 10th edition. And I mean, it was fun, but it was very much kind of a, a learning experience still. It was kind of like, oh, okay, this is good at this. This is not good at so good at this. What, what did you think? I mean, I enjoyed it. I, I, I enjoy the way that they've changed command points. Um, I felt yeah. like in 8th and ninth edition, command points had totally begun to kind of dominate the game and, and stratagems. Everything was about what stratagems you were going People were more kind of focused pages on getting pages, stratagems. Probably. But yeah, but more focused upon what stratagems they were going to get off when than what the actual models were doing. And I, yeah. I, I like a strategic game, but I felt like the stratagems had begun to dominate too much. The so limited... what did you play in your, in your second game? What army did you use? Use I used my Storm Drakes, which is my successor chapter. Uh, they're a oh, cool. successor chapter uh, that I started building, I think, at the when ninth came out. I mean, they may have been begun in 8th, I'm not sure. I think they may have begun during third lockdown, because I had a tactical squad sitting in a box somewhere, and I'm like, oh, I'll just pick them up in a colour scheme that I fancy. I've made up a colour scheme. Uh, I'll throw up some pictures uh, in the Discord. Uh, if people Did you uh, unleash a lot of fire, then? Yes and no. Well, it's, they're built more because they're a successor chapter. They do have like heavy flamers and um, you know the combi flamers and stuff with my stern guard, which are now just combi weapons. Uh, but no, they had um, a lot of bolter fire because at the time that ninth came out, you had the option to pick different kind of doctrines almost for the army, and I'd picked the one that meant lots of dreadnoughts and lots of bolter fire. So it's right. built around stuff like heavy intercessors, intercessors. Stern Guard with combi weapons and Stern Guard bolters and stuff. Um, centurions with kind of chest bolters and siege drills. Um, all the DACA. All the DACA, that's it. Lots and lots of uh, throw some lead down the range kind of approach. I'm sensing an arc theme here. I, uh, uh, yeah, and then lots of power fists and big boxy dreadnought things running up the field screaming and crumping things. Because <laughs> I'm an orc player, whichever, whatever game I play, I'm playing orcs, to be honest. <laughs> nice, nice, I like it. That's very. Yeah, but I was up against my friend's Death admit. Guard, and uh, yeah, they are really kind of all the kind of the, the, the different kind of stuff that they throw out. The kind of the difficulties to your toughness, the drag on your armor save and stuff, the the kind of slow degradation of your army is really characterful, but it's kind of hard to. <laughs> to when I'm just thinking, I just want to go over there and crump them, and yeah. <laughs> everyone's falling over sick. It was nice. a good game. I lost by like nearly. They got nearly twice as many victory points as me. This weekend, though, I have been doubling down on getting my Empire stuff painted, and I'm really chuffed with what I've got done. I've managed to get two yeah, I've seen some new stuff on Twitter. Yeah, I'll be throwing up some kind of pictures as I go um, on my Twitter feed, and I'm going to throw some pictures up in the Discord as well of what I've gotten done. But I've managed to get... I'll show you just here, and then I'll put a proper picture up on the Discord. So I've got um, halberdiers that I've converted out of the 6th edition spearmen and some spare halberds that I have, but I've done, and some feathers that I had from another... Yeah, I think it's a high elf kit. Awesome. Uh, but I've done them up to look like the halberdiers that you got in the little kind of five pound boxes back mm. in fourth and fifth edition. So I've painted them up in the same color scheme. I've given them shields to match. And it's my nice. kind of I'm trying to recreate that nostalgic uh, kind of early style of Empire Soldier, but using some, I mean, still like 20 odd year old kits. Yeah. <laughs> and more, 25. Uh, there's still some quite old kits. I mean, to be there. fair, a lot of old world players are now building 20 year old kits and 15 year yeah, old kits. Yeah, this is true. This is it, exactly. I'm, um, I'm yeah, up in the time in real life. I, I, I love that. I've loved Twitter, actually, um, for anyone who's not on it, uh, since old world's come back or been coming back because the number of old kits and everything that everybody's been showing off on social media that they've oh, been building. Oh, it's beautiful. Up. So beautiful. It's awesome to see. Um, very and nice it's, it's great for people that missed out the first time round as well. They get to experience building them all kits. 
definitely. And finding out how annoying skeleton horses can be sometimes <laughs> when you're trying to glue them together. <laughs> well, uh, thank you, Ben, uh, for your hobby update then. Uh, we shall get on to the news because uh, uh, I know we could chat on for ages about what we've been doing in Hobby and World. So uh, first thing I wanted to bring up this week, lads, uh, from the last week, it was actually very beginning of last week and it nearly didn't make the cut, but I just couldn't not bring it up because it made me laugh quite hard, to be honest. And I wanted to see your guys' opinion on it. Oh, as well. I know what this is. I know you, this you know is. what it is, don't you, I think? Um, so what we've got is a couple of trailers, actually, but the first one of which is for a game. Has anyone ever heard of Power Wash Simulate, Simulator? Or had anyone heard of it? I've heard of it. it. You I've, heard heard of it. it. I've never played it, but I've seen it and I've heard of it. Yeah. Um, I had never heard of it until no? the, game, the Warhammer oh, version. Okay, so... I was literally... I thought, am I being punked? Is this, like, <laughs> uh, an April Fool's? So, this what is we've tough. got is uh, Power Wash Simulator Warhammer 40,000. So, Power Wash Simulator, if you hadn't played the original game, is literally, um, effectively, I think in the original game, you used to literally just be able to get a Power Wash and jet down a multitude of different things, different cars of your choice, airplanes, different p things of transport, <laughs> houses. Who comes up with this? It's like... Untitled exactly. Goose Game. There's actually and a what button they've done like, is a honking. Game way a honk more popular button. than they probably thought. Um, and they've started to basically um, ask different New things sort you of, can power uh, wash. licensing yeah, it out, yeah. effectively. And Warhammer, you don't want to be the guy who's washing the rhino after they've just fought the Death Guard. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and Games Workshop have, of course, jumped on this bandwagon. I think they did a SpongeBob uh, DLC last year, SpongeBob SquarePants. Uh, that just tells you sort of where they've gone with this. And, yeah, they've they've now gone with uh, Warhammer 40,000 and they've released that trailer there. You know what? That, that will be popular. It, it, that, I think that will do well. See, I yeah. want the end level to be that he's, like, power washing this Land Raider or something, and as he's stripping off the the grime, this three-headed Hydra symbol kind of slowly <laughs> appears from beneath the oh, dirt. Yeah. And just loads <laughs> of error messages in scrap code start appearing at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh, I, the, the thing that made me laugh straight away is I couldn't believe it, but then it, it took me about 20 seconds into the trailer to go, no, this is very Games Workshop nowadays. I'm not surprised <sighs> at all. And this has become quite a popular game just for people who, I think people just enjoy the, the, the aesthetic of, you know, cleaning things off and it's kind of a good thing to mentally kind of calm yourself down sort of thing and play uh, one of those sort of games. Um, but the thing that made me laugh was just the actual ad mech guy with the power wash just there, really stiffly kind of. <laughs> I think that just made it for me. I, I, I must can't do this say... in a linear pattern. Yeah, I... I I mean, we need it, a tie-in miniature release. I mean, they need to release a, like a single Skitari dude with a power washer yes, and a little water um, tank on his back. <laughs> <laughs> I would I buy that. that. Yeah. No, definitely. And um, yeah, I, I, uh, I don't know if I'll be trying this out myself. I might do if I see. It'll be one of those where if it goes cheap on Steam or something, yeah. I'll get it anyway. I'll get the missus to play it with me for a laugh. It, you know, we'll, we'll have it's a coming go. Coming on Nintendo Switch as well. Yeah, I was thinking. I've got um, shooters. Is it shooters, guns, and teeth? Is that what it's called? The orc gun of gun and run oh, side controller. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think it's shooters, guns, and teeth, or shooters, blood, and teeth, or so. It's some suitably gory name. But I got that <laughs> on my switch, and it is a lot of fun. You just kind of sit there. And go, <laughs> um, I am slightly disappointed that we got this before we got any kind of Star Wars Battlefront style forty k game, because mm -hmm. that is what I've been crying out for. I mean, yeah. Kind of in terms of gaming for me, that kind of was peak gaming. It was just jump into the body of random trooper, run around and fight you know an entire what, army. That, that was actually probably one of the, uh, uh, one of these weeks on the podcast. I think we will have to do our top three video games that we'd like to see. Maybe it's a good idea. Yeah, that would probably be That's... up there for me, Ben. As right well. up there for yeah. The original Battle Battle Front Battle Two, Battlefront Two, especially like the mode yeah. where yes. you can like the AI as well, in, and like, you can jump into characters, like, Geonosis and stuff. Yeah. That would be incredible. You'd suddenly, yeah, like, Marius Kalgar has become available. Chomp, chomp, fist, guns. <laughs> yes. I would be so cool! Well, do you remember how on Star Wars Battlefront 2 as well, you used to have all the mode where you could just fight with all the Jedis and, and the... Um, yeah, heroes versus villains. Villain. Yeah. yeah, that's what yeah. it's called, yeah. Imagine that, but with the Primarchs or something oh, wicked like that. So cool. You know what I mean? Just, 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 just generally, just literally, like, all the special characters from a particular army versus all the special characters from another army. That would be so cool. Exactly. Yeah, the elites could be like Terminator armor. So Terminator armor is now available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you can teleport okay. in. 
Let's crack on then to the next one. Uh, Warhammer TV. There's a new mm-hmm. animation coming out. Uh, Broken Lance, I think it's called. That's um, right. Nice. So uh, yeah. this one is effectively to do with the, not Titans, Imperial Knights. Yeah. Um, and I, there's not too much more information on it yet. But um, from what I've seen of it, looks interesting. Could be kind of cool to see more more lore, get more lore out of this. Um, and the aesthetic about Imperial Knights um there's the one scene on here that we'll see in a minute for those who are actually watching on youtube uh that like the interior yeah i love how there's not uh, there's chaos knights in it as well so it's not just a big imperial knight mm. going ruffle stomp on everybody it's going to be nice versus nice exactly um, i think the helmet looks weird in the in the <laughs> cockpit shot because i thought for a minute is like is that as somebody like over cgi that over the top of well, what like, you watch, think of the cgi for this i'm not fast yeah it um, looks like a bad... You see that chain blade going at the end, that's pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool, yeah. Um, it. I mean, like, for me, it's going to be more... If I have, if, if it comes out, I might sign up to uh, Warhammer uh, Plus to kind of take a look at it. Just, we'll wait and see what people kind of say about I'll it. Be well, wa- I'll be watching it. I'm subscribed to Warhammer Plus. So you, you've got it, so yeah. Uh, so you'll mm. be on to it. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure like I will it. at some point as well. Um, might be intrigued, depending on what people say with that one. It it the graphic, the CGI didn't big me up. T- to be honest, I mean we know that on YouTube you've got a lot of creators who just make stuff better than even what you know that what Games Workshop are paying to get done nowadays mm-hmm. um, you know, on their own time. So that yeah, side yeah. of it didn't impress me. That's a whole nother podcast, that isn't it? It but is. They've also got really shows on combo, but they've shown they can do better CGI. Hmm. They have dem. I mean things like Prior Nexus. Yeah. has shown that they can do better CGI. Right, Nexus, I really enjoyed. I thought it was yeah, great. Yeah, it's brilliant. Is there any part of it that makes you wonder, are they... Obviously, because we know how obviously how Warmer, Warmer Plus from the start, everybody had big expectations for it, and it's kind of just gone downhill from the launch, really. And I'm sure their numbers certainly have. But... It, it, it has gone downhill a little bit, but I mean, for what, you, for what you're paying for, for me... Yeah. I think it's all right because you've got the miniature, you do get animation, and then you've got access to the vault. And I suppose it's what you're going to be using. I like the vault. I like reading all the old stuff in there. So for me, I'd say it's value for money because if you go out to the cinema nowadays for what two hours of entertainment, you buy mm. if there's two of you, something to eat and a drink. You're talking like nearly fifty quid anyway for a, a decent night out at the cinema with food for two people. So yeah, for, no, for me, it- one I, was, I quite like it. That's it could good. be better, don't get me wrong, it could be a lot better, but I'm happy with what I've paid for so far. That's I think it's good value for money, I think, it, and it, some of the stuff they've produced is excellent. Mm. I just, in that particular one, it may only be that one small snippet, the animation didn't make me go, whoa! It made me <laughs> go, they've done video games with better cut screen animation than that. <clears throat> yeah. No, that that's my exa- was my exact thoughts, Ben, really. Um... Let's go on then to another thing. Well, the main thing that I really wanted to get into today, really, with you guys, because I know the two of you as well are big into uh, the old world now. Um, we've got some... The Sunday preview this week ended up definitely being Yay! the main topic. It was huge, got, wasn't it? It was awesome. Yeah, it was big. Uh, I, I'd planned everything throughout the last week for this <laughs> podcast, and then the Sunday preview came out and uh, everything changed. Ah, so yeah. that's how it goes. Um, but I'll get it up actually on here so that uh, everybody who's actually watching can see. But we'll run through it for you if you're on audio as well. Um, and we'll scroll down as to what's going on. The first so, thing yeah, that was first actually up. shown on here, and I'll get your guys' opinion on it because we haven't obviously managed to chat about anything yet on the podcast, is the Solar Auxilia Battle Group will be going up for pre order, I believe, next weekend or the following weekend. I think um, next weekend. It's, not, it's the following weekend, isn't it? It's the following one because I, oh, okay. I, I, so. I think everyone is. Is it still everything on a two-week pre-order? I'm not. I'm not checked. To be I honest. mean, it'll probably. I'm it'll not probably sure. Probably say and remind us at the bottom of this the the article we're, we're looking at anyway. Yeah, for the Sunday preview. But um, just any thoughts, lads, on the Solar Auxilia? Because I know we haven't had um, any uh, thoughts on this yet. <laughs> well, and I mean, a big battle set. It's great to see it out for Horus Heresy. I mean, I've never been a fan of the whole Solar Auxilia aesthetic in terms of the looks of them. I know I, I like how the void, uh, void sealed troopers and stuff like that. I'm just not a fan of the look and like the vehicles with all the rivets and what have you. But it does look like a really nice box, obviously depending on the price. And uh, it's nice to see a, another kit make the jump from resin to plastic as well. 
Yeah, I'm expecting a fairly big price tag on this one, not going to lie. Um, I would guess at the 140, 150 range. Two yeah. tanks and, and effectively a small walker. I'd say minimum yeah. then, to be fair for that, I'd, I reckon. Um, but uh, I personally, the heavy sentinels, I think, look wicked. Um, yeah, they look cool. Well, how, many, how many personally... infantry is it? 25 infantry? Yeah, because it says there's 28 uh, minutes yeah, in the box on the back. Yeah, and then you get a command, back. I think, or even a couple of potential to make a couple of commands. I think it's 20 infantry and 5 command squad, because it says and 28 minutes in the background. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the two tanks think it's the new, kind of, their version of the Lehman Russ, and then I don't, yeah. can't remember what the name of the other one is, actually. Um, um, it might be actually on here, to be fair. The Carnodon or something, isn't it? No, it'll, 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 it'll tell us here. Dracosin. Uh, Dracosin. 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 Yeah, which actually looks wicked to be fair. But um I, I don't personally yet have Horus Heresy faction um or army. So I am tempted by this later than in the year after my current projects are done and out of the way. Uh, for now. The other good thing that be, that'll be um, useful for is um uh, kit mashing for Imperial Guard. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's one thing though that my my gripe about the Horus Heresy stuff that they're doing at the moment <clears> is that they haven't made the stuff that was is available for Horus Heresy readily available as part of 40k. So in terms of everything that is a plastic Horus Heresy model is pretty much legends for 40k. So yeah. oh, I know if you, you, you yeah. can't use pretty much, I think you might be able to use the Lehman Russ as a Lehman Russ, maybe, but the Heavy Sentinel will not get, I would be surprised, if it gets the rules for use in a regular Astro no, but I, I reckon you could use it as an Armoured Sentinel. You could, but that my point is at that point you could just go, okay, this counts as a, a sentinel. I I I love converted armies. I object to having to count as things because Games Workshop haven't mm. given me the rules for stuff. That's fair. Or have given me the rules but said, Oh, but you can't use these at X number of things. Yeah. So like my um my mentioned at the beginning is my Storm Drake's army, I won't be able to take it to most events that are run at Warhammer World, which is most of the kind of events that Games Workshop run that I, I like to go to, because I've got a Leviathan in there, I've got uh, Ironclad in there, I've got a whole bunch of stuff that is now marked as Legends. Legends, yeah. And yeah. you can't yeah. use that, and likewise It'd be nice here. if you just included a sentence that said some Space Marine chapters contain one or two extremely rare examples of Dreadnought pattern, and you then they could did. use it, but... Seventh, I mean, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth edition yeah. of forty k did. It's only tenth when they've gone. No, no, you can't use them. And I think it's because they, they're worried about having to balance it for the tournament scene, and therefore mm. they've kind of gone. Okay, well, we can't, we can't make it fit the tournament scene without breaking the tournament scene. And Games Workshop seem determined to bend over backwards for tournament <laughs> players, like they'll contort themselves into convoluted knots to make a tournament work, rather Absolutely. than just turning around and going, "Hey, it's a tournament." Take it easy. Don't think it's quite so seriously. But hey, no. there we go. Agreed. That's, that's Agreed. my pet peeve. My pet peeve. Um, Storm, moving Storm on to here console uh, next. Yeah, this is a this gorgeous is a model. console. Uh, I like this. I love the lore behind this mod. These models as well. The fact that they can like control the coming weather. That's so cool. <laughs> it's basically Storm out of X Men. Yeah. 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 Um, so this is the. Uh, um, Help me out, lads, here. The uh, White Star, 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 Star Console. It's yeah. a specialist librarian option. Lovely for... model. It's a good one. The one I have with this, when I first saw this model previewed, I had I did a double take, as did several of my friends, because we know a guy who looks, I kid you not, like we thought, have they like done this as an homage to Michael? Because that's <laughs> Michael. I'm does not he ride, making does it. he ride a motorbike? <laughs> no, but he, he's like he's this like Germanic uh, kind of metal club well, then, guy if, who if goes uh... down the... If you don't create now a side by side meme of your friend Michael, oh no, it exists model, out there. He, uh, he, to, to put online, then you need to uh, do it. <laughs> he regularly goes to the Las Vegas Open. He's a member of the Titan Owners Club, and he turns uh, to the Las okay. Vegas Open with his like selection of Titans. But he is, I mean, to the point where I kind of went, did they see him at LVO and just go, hey, that guy, that guy He'll is going to be the new librarian for the White Scars. And then you got the Dark Emissary as well here, console, <laughs> the living oh. embodiment of the sad emoji. <laughs> yeah, look at his face. But, I mean, literally, you cannot have to do that to it make your is, battle. Give to stick a finger in each corner. It's got to be the most e the easiest highlightable face in uh, all of Warhammer <laughs> modeling. Yes, <laughs> it is. Oh, it's it's the staff face. of Dark Authority, apparently. Oh, okay, very nice. Yeah. It is a lovely model, though. I mean, I've got a, I've got a Sons of Horus army, so I would probably quite happily get that. Now we're talking. All right, so I was happy with this one. Uh, Apothecary and detachment. Yeah, it's the and Mark these are so Horus Heresy, uh, really it's like. unreal. 
I want to see more Mark V. I want them to release a squad box. And we've got a squad box of Mark III. We've got a squad box of Mark IV and a squad box of Mark VI. Give us a squad box of Mark V Games Workshop. It is the yeah. raddest of armies. Armors. What I love about that is it's clearly like a new type of Mark V armor as well. And I love the helmet. If you look at the helmet, mm -hmm. it's because it's Mark, the Mark V helmet is meant to be like a failed uh, attempt at Terminator helmet, isn't it? Yep, like yes, an ad yeah. adaptation of a Terminator helmet. And if you look at his helmet, it looks very much like the helmet of Tyberos, the, the Red Wake, you know, the Charadon's guy. So I love how they've done that. Whether it's, it's like intentional a Terminator or not. helmet's been squidged. Yeah, so I don't know if it's intentional or not, but I love the sort of the link there. I love very that. Nice. I really hope we do see more no, Mark that... V armor. Mark VI. Now, both awesome. <laughs> Take it or leave it now with Mark VI. So seen enough of it and here we go into the warhammer the old world reveals uh a lot of which to be honest i think these first lot that we've got on here at least for anybody who's watching anyway um is uh just the separate box sets from the original tomb king and bretonian set that we got on release for old world and um, that you can now get these things separately um so if you want to field multiple uh, zombie dragons or zombie dragons <laughs> with heroes on them now you can. Uh, so obviously, it's a we... bone dragon rather than a zombie dragon. Isn't That's it? true, actually. It's, it's called it's bone dragon. Some, Correct. Some Thanks for correcting me, Ben. Is why if you take <laughs> wings off, it's a uh, born crocodile. That's pretty much what I'm doing with mine. A yeah. lot of people have done that. Yeah, Building I've it seen a lot wings. of people do it. To be fair, as well, it's pretty cool. Um, if it can really fly cool with just like finger bones for wings, then it can fly without them. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, Neckaf, uh, emissary, etc. Have we already That's had this one out, model. Ben? We haven't, have we? No, no, so they previewed it, uh, I think, one of the earlier pre ago. year previews. Um, yeah. Its rules are in the Arcane Journal, but yeah, it's such a cool model. I it love really that. is. Uh, this has got to be one of my favourite ones that they've dropped on the Sunday preview, to be fair. And yeah, I like great. all the scarabs all over it. It's pretty Do you think cool. you'll be onto this one, Cy, for, uh Have you got this model, Ben, now? No, no, well, he's not out yet, is he? No, yeah, uh, is there no yet. older model for it now? No, 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 it's, no, it's not an, this this is a, new a brand uh, new, just a new one. Yeah. model, and it's a brand new character as well. He didn't exist until uh, the Arcane nice. Journal, so he's a new invention, okay, and so he's no, really cool. I'll definitely be on to that one, because, uh, yeah, he's the one that, like, reads out all of, uh, he's basically the one that out he's, he's reading all Sector's titles, and like, yeah. he texts him, like, forever. Reads and out all his got titles. The flail, the skulls, are those who failed to, like, comply with Sector's last, um, you know, proclamation of ownership that, that the heads of the dead generals oh. have been kind of gilded and then attached to his flail. <laughs> but each time it's the, the, the these are the ones who came before and didn't listen. <laughs> Very nice. So I'll be looking forward to that one um, for sure. Uh, we've got the archers and the, the, the normal warriors coming back of course i've seen enough uh, of them in the last week <laughs> yes yeah I, i'm look, i've got I've, I've actually the one thing i forgot to mention i did manage to actually build um round about 10 warriors as well to be fair so i did get managed to get that done until i realized uh, that my friend needed me to get this, the bone Jeez. dragon done so <laughs> but uh, and uh, just alongside those as well you've got the chariots the horsemen coming in separate sets if you anyone wants to pick those up as well more chariots in the, yeah chariots of fire um, and Cetra. You've got to have Cetra bang in the middle there with all of those That's chariots. not Cetra, actually. That is the generic Tomb King uh, on No, chariots. no, sorry. Yeah. I was just saying, like, uh, in terms of oh, the right. list you can build. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, be able to get Cetra in the middle of, like, a big chariot uh, list would be awesome. <laughs> I think that's what will be yeah, inspiring but... me to get more chariots anyway. But no, you're right, Ben. On to these uh, returning metals. Um, mm -hmm. The three that we have, I think these are actually just returning models. They're not, not yeah, these are all, new, are they? Yeah, the horses are uh, plastic, but the chariots, I think, is metal. Yeah, so you've got Prince Abbas, They're all previous releases. Whitwild in Necrotect, and Tomb King on Chariot. Yeah. Apophis is such a cool character in the background as well. The the, uh, the kind of the lore behind it. But the fact that he's literally just a skull and everything else is scarabs. <laughs> really is really cool. cool. Yeah. I'm interested to see... Uh, have we got the rules already out, Ben, for... I've got them right here. Yeah, I've got them right here. He's got very, very. Oh, yeah, the flavor pamphlet. I've got the flavor pamphlet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so and, his um... his special rules is if, for example, he's ever reduced to his last, if he ever loses his last wound, remove him from play, and enemy units within two d six inches take two d six strength two hits to represent Ooh. the swarms of scarabs exploding <laughs> outwards, which is really cool. And he's got a breath weapon where he just basically opens his mouth and breathes. 
kind of, wow. uh, so it's the, the flavor template that comes in the box it just breathes kind of hordes of desiccated it's like all over on the mummy isn't it with all the flies exactly <laughs> absolutely that's, that's how it happens in awesome. my head very nice so cool so yeah i think i agree that's my favorite one out of those three models on the, on the preview anyway. two scorpions Yes, um, and, uh, and the screaming school catapult. What, what well. did I Supposedly. message you about, lads? That the was it last week or the week before this? Um, I have to let the viewers know about this anyway. I said um, asked about the st- team scorpions, didn't I? Because I thought I might be able to get hold of some. Um, mm-hmm. And then Ben did mention that oh, I'm pretty sure they've got them coming soon anyway. And I'm glad yeah. I held on um, because yeah. Apparently, as well, they've they've changed the way the team scorpion goes together. I think they've put like ball joints yeah. on it now to make it easier yes. to build. So it's actually it, constructible right? now, rather than you just yeah. rage quitting and throwing it on the floor in a ball of kind of screwed up metal and super glue. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, yeah, it's, it. it's still resin, but at, <laughs> at least they've uh, you know they've they've. But it's Forge World resin now. It's not like Finecaster or anything. They have made they've it Forge World resin. They have changed it back, That's so it good. should be much much better. That's and good. apparently, they're pretty evil rules wise as well. Oh yeah. I've, I have had a peek at them. They do look pretty cool. They they can uh, come in from reserves, can't they, Ben? Cause they, they came uh, from below. Yes, yeah. they tunnel yeah. their way up. Bring them, you can yeah. bring them up anywhere. And I think yeah. is it like, they've got like a Monster Slayer rule or something similar. They can basically like that. one bang something if, you, if you're cool. lucky. So one of the, spe- the, one of the special uh... army lists in the flavor pamphlets has uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, rules for terrors below which is literally let you spend a few extra points on tomb scorpions and necro serpents and having them kind of burst out from underneath enemy units so you can literally pay to have them do kind of the old morlock rule of having them burst out when they appear underneath an enemy unit and of course hits that's on the unit cool. as they erupt out of the dirt which is cool. Really cool. Skull the, uh... as well apparently that's been had more details sculpted onto it as well yes and it's a, supposedly again easier to assemble i'm not mm. sure i'm keen on the black and gold though I don't know if I'd choose that scheme or not, personally, but... I mean, I the original know. ones were painted up in just kind of the bone colour. I bone. like the I black and gold for what it's worth. You do like that, yeah? I like that, yeah. Well, there you yeah, go. I'd, I'd go for, like, a, a bluey black, you know, like the shanty yeah. style... Well, that could be quite cool, uh, to be fair. ...scheme, if you like. Um, but then we do have the catapult as well. This is actually one... I th- th- Personally, this is one of my favourite Team King models. Um... I just love how it it looks like they've just used a ton of bones to assemble this catapult. <laughs> um, I, I, I've always appreciated that model and the fact that they've uh, redesigned it, brought it back. It, that should be awesome. Uh, you got Carrion, Carrion as well. Carrion. There's an extra one. Say again? Yes, the previously unreleased one that they've added for oh. the unit. Because yeah. there used to only be two models, but now there's three. Okay. Which one is the extra one? I think it's the one with its wings sprayed out that's kind okay. of on the left of the picture that would so th- make sense yeah i think that's the the newer of the three but I, that's the small, coolest looking let us know in the comments <laughs> below if, if we're wrong please folks yeah, yeah so carry on, on getting, carry. getting uh the three of them in there as well now which which is awesome uh and we move on to uh i think da, probably da, da, da. Uh, yeah the bretonians and their uh so these are the new knights of the realm on foot aren't they yeah that's yeah. what you've been painting it it's, it's like yeah um i got one from um Warhammer World on the release day, so I got a free one that I, I was actually messing around with it this week, finishing it off. It's still needs sorting out, but it's, it's getting there. Just have a dabble on it when the, I get bored of it. I, haven't looked, I can't remember what came in the Bretonian set um, when it launched. Did these come in that? No, no these no. were not in the Plastic Army deal box. Okay. So you'll be able to pick those up then separately, guys. Uh, the and it's a box of 20 as well. As well. Yeah, that's good. Yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Are these kind of like more the more elite option? Would you say? Um, so I'm not as familiar with Bretonians. Rules wise, these are exactly as the same as Bretonian Knights of the Realm. It's just that you can take them in a larger unit because they're obviously on foot, so you don't have the, the cost of the horse thrown in points wise. Yes. So as you might have like you know at most ten knights in a, a lance formation. Here you can have a unit of twenty, for example. You can also arm them either with swords and shields or with great weapons. So you've got a bit more of a kind of variety of weapon options. Nice. Um, okay. I've not again. I've not obviously got a box of these, so I've never tried them. I'm intrigued no, to add them at some point in the kit. And this is the unreleased guy, isn't it? Oh god! All, right, all the memes I don't uh, want that to be have been surrounding this fella for the last two weeks. And for anybody who's only <laughs> listening on Spotify, it's the Lord with Great Weapon who looks it's, like it's... he's on the loo. Um... <laughs> yeah, so that's being <laughs> polite. Yes. About that if you're listening on audio, this is apparently something that they, they sculpted years ago. That never got released. But it was going to be a Games Day model. Yeah, it was originally going to be a Games Day model. 
Yeah, and it never got released. And they, they, I think they found it in the back of a cupboard or something and decided to tweak it. But yeah. the head on it is is different. <laughs> um, <laughs> the best, I don't mind it, to be honest. The I best mean, one I've it, seen. It got, it got a lot of hate on the internet. And I, it does look a bit odd, but I don't mind it. To I be think honest. some people will want to own it just for that, though. To be honest, the, the, yeah, it's it's a unique. I model. would probably take the head Victorian off. Fan, you know, I'd probably, probably take the head off. <laughs> <laughs> if I had some spare heads from like the Footnote models, I might take the head off. Uh, ben, you know what those. I want to do? I want to take the head off of this guy and mm. put it on a Space Marine captain. No. <laughs> oh, the only thing I will say is, you saw all the all the stuff on the internet. I feel sorry for the guy who actually sculpted this. Yeah, because... I do too. And he must have read some of that and thought, or she must have read some of that and thought, oh, God. The rest of the but model he... is a beautiful model. And yeah, it is. The, I... just the, face, the face just looks a bit 90s Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, guys, the best one I've sure, seen exactly of the sure. Go on, Ben, sorry. Is the, the best one I've seen of the meme is where they've, they've just, someone's green, uh, photoshopped the helmet that the little like squire yeah. is holding on the model, but left the squire holding it. Like the squire is riding piggyback, <laughs> gripping onto the antlers. <laughs> oh dear, that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, if anybody is curious as to what model we're referring to, which you, if you're if you're at all awake in the world of social media or whatever, you will have seen this guy's picture floating around. Yeah, but we'll, we'll, I'll pop it in the Discord with a laughing emoji after this, maybe, and you'll know. <laughs> <laughs> but probably the best reason we've given you to go over to the Discord, to be honest. <laughs> um, on Knights of the Realm, on the uh, the cavalry. More so these were in the box. These were. In these the were, yeah. Box. These were in the set, yeah. Yeah, and these also. I mean, this set also makes the knights errands as well. You just use some different heads. Okay, yeah, yeah. But no, nice models. They're they're coming along. Uh, Kingdom of Britannia returning metal models. This so is much cool. Like the Tomb Kings. What this is cool, Ben. This is your this is your wheelhouse. This. Yeah. Oh, okay. so okay. Those questing knights. I mean, up until a little as a month ago. You could probably buy a small car for the price that some of those questing knights were going for on eBay. They are gorgeous, gorgeous models, and I found out only today actually that they were sculpted by the same guy who does. He now has his own company, Black Scorpion Miniatures. If you've seen any of his stuff, I've heard um, of that. Yeah. yeah, no, check out. He does. He's got a uh, his own game, Tombstone, which is a Wild West shoot 'em up kind of game. It's really, oh, really cool. cool. And kind of a bit Weird West as well. So he's got like rules for undead cowboys and stuff in his Weird West game. But yeah, he's got a, a whole range of awesome sculptor models, but he was a Games Workshop sculptor back in the early thousands, and he did those questing knights, and they are gorgeous. They're dripping with detail. Two-handed I mean, like, swords as well, aren't they? Well, so that was when they changed the, the rules and the laws that said that, Grey, that um, Knights of the Realm, when they went on quest, abandoned the lance and didn't pick it up again until they kind of seen the grail, so they all got great swords instead. Which, for someone who's got a unit of questing knights from 5th edition, all armed with lances is really annoying, because it means that all my questing knights have to be, <laughs> like, knights of the realm in this edition. I but nonetheless, they are gorgeous models, and it's just the little these detail. These are some of my favourite Bretonian models I've seen, to oh. be fair. And the fact so, that they have to be master horsemen to ride a horse and wield a great sword. Yeah. Right the knees. But it's, in particular, it's if you ever find a picture of what they look like, or if you get yourself a set of what they look like on the back, they've got stuff like the, the banner bearer has a little kind of urchin standing on his back with a, with a telescope spying out for so him. So much detail. One of them's got a wardrobe on his back, like literally like a chest of drawers. You know, it's, he's, got, he's carrying his luggage with him, and it's got lots <laughs> of little drawers in it. One of them's playing a loot side saddle, like he's the uh, Chris Pine say, the, character from the, the D&D the movie. The musician at the front, I think that's one of my favourite <laughs> musicians I've seen in a unit. That, that's awesome. <laughs> they are gorgeous, gorgeous models, and I'm equally pleased to see the, the Metal Squires come back, because I've got a unit of these, and they are beautiful models to paint. And I remember first seeing these when they released in the Bretonian Hunting Party box, so back in the late 90s. And I like the two kneeling guys. Yeah, no, that's it. I mean, uh, because back then you could obviously mail order individually, and I always wanted to mail order a whole bunch of the kneeling guys and have them kind of positioned but with the other guys standing behind them, like they were firing in two ranks. Yeah, they are really, really gorgeous models, and these were, I think, sculpted by the Perrys. Mm. Perry twins. The the, fa yeah. the the faces on those models are fantastic. Um, and come Prophet down, the famous it. Green Knight Ben, such a good model. Yeah. So again, the prophetesses, uh, they were sculpted by the same guy from Black Scorpion. He, he sculpted both of those as well. And I found out today he sculpted the Noblar Trapper models. 
um, that they had the the little kind of knoblars with like man traps and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Which he shared some pictures of the greens on his Twitter feed. I'll try and put a link to it in the Discord, um, including a picture of a previously unreleased knoblar trapper, which is like a knoblar pulling a little dog backwards by the tail. And he said we, we asked him why it hadn't been released because it's clearly awesome. He was told the dog was too cute for the range, <laughs> so they couldn't release it. And also, it was supposed to be a cat, but he got distracted and like sculpted a dog instead. <laughs> but I digress. No, you has got both of those damsels. Ah, oh, they, they, they are beautiful. I've got both those damsels in my army, and I haven't yet got the Green Knight, because I had the Green Knight, but I chopped him up back when he was just something you could just get oh. on the shelf. <laughs> well, you could get him on the shelf all the time. I never knew he was going to disappear. So, oh, yeah, I chopped my Green Knight up. Oh, he's and was shivered when you said that. <laughs> I know, I, I know. His powers of foresight yet, so yeah. It... No, we hadn't yet. <laughs> I can't the, talk. The I the chopped up Captain Cortez, the Imperial Fisk, uh, the Crimson Fisk. The one with the oh, fist yeah. held over his head like that. Mm. Yeah, he's, ole, you know, that yes. was the power fist. <laughs> like he's a flamenco yeah. dancer. Yeah, and I cut, his, I cut his power fist off and put a different oh, one on God. there. But when I look back now, I was like, oh, no, why did I do that? <laughs> Well, I'm very looking forward to getting my hands on a copy of the Green Knight to actually paint Green it as Knight. the Green Knight. Cause... I'm glad they haven't changed it. Because that's no, awesome. It's the best. It's awesome. It didn't, didn't very, really very good. It. Um, and I think, uh, I, I want to say that lots on pre-order next weekend, if not the following one, guys. At some point in the next uh, two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> Let's go with that. Basically. It's yeah. not going to be any later than that. So uh, that's that. And then obviously next weekend, we do have the reveal weekend. Uh, mm. I think mostly on the Saturday from Warhammer World. So next week's podcast, we'll end up talking about the reveals from that, which will be awesome. Plenty to talk about, I'm sure, from that. Um, otherwise, just jumping off of Old World, actually, from those reveals, I did have a small thing I wanted to bring up that's popped up in the last week, mm -hmm. and that was actually a uh, an article that came out on uh, Warhammer Community, and own people have picked up on some of the text. Uh, you know how they put these little uh, kind of things in where they oh, know, know, like, read at the bottom of the article and footnotes. You know, yes, footnotes is probably snuck, the best way of putting it. They snuck the news in for mm -hmm. Old World in a total Warhammer community post. Just kind of spat it out the side of their mouth where they didn't want anyone to notice what they were saying. Exactly, and I wanted to get our thoughts on what this is and uh, to let the viewers it's know. It's all this is coming for Warhammer, to a total war Warhammer, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, That's by it. the way, um, Grand Cathay and Kislev are not coming any time in the near future, at least they've said. Yeah. Um, they've not ruled it out. Old I think that's an important point. It is. Yeah, well done, so I've said that. They've the Kislev not ruled it out. surprised me more than anything. Maybe not Cathay, but Kislev, because they kind of opened the whole Warhammer Old World thing with Kislev, didn't mm -hmm. they? And they, they were Loads of concept art. Out. In fact, I, I did a video what, ages ago saying, and one of the thumbnails said, where is Kislev? And I think they actually said... They will be one of the main factions coming to the tabletop, but then it's obviously the directions changed, the the missions changed. So, yeah, um, I mean, literally, it is just a small thing they put at the bottom. It's very typical of them, to be honest. When they know they've done a boo boo, um, <laughs> they've got to fix it a bit, um, and they kind of do just chuck it out in in some fashion like this. The only reason I wanted to bring it up was obviously just because there will have been obviously we. We hadn't started the podcast by this point, but there was obviously a lot of people outraged on social media after Old World had dropped. They, you know, announced all the new eight armies that were coming back. We obviously had Legends rules that came out afterwards. I think what was it? Out a week Se after? Yeah, but a um, little, two days. But yeah, two days yeah, after. Yeah, um, and uh, we didn't get obviously Grand Cathay or Kislev in there the legacy rules either so I think everybody was just sort of like where on earth are the rules for these mm -hmm. are you surprised guys eventually. that they didn't at least give legacy rules for the old people who have these armies or are you just not surprised I'm not surprised because no. Games Workshop have a habit of sometimes fluffing stuff like the way in which they announced we're the legacy armies but we're never ever 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 going to support them whatsoever yeah, but but having said that, I would say that's not final either. You know what? Yeah, like. exactly. Yeah, because as I said, they they did release a, a lot of the artwork and things that and hints they were giving. There was a lot with for the kids first like. load of old world. I think there's a few articles to be honest we could bring up. Um, where they've used well, there was concept artwork, drawings, weren't there, for the concept, some of the stuff, units, concept the, stuff, not just yeah. the, the the video game for actual what yeah. they intended to bring to Old World. Uh, well, and they're on so... the map as well. I mean, they've literally yeah. taken the time oh. of putting, like, you know, shields and information stuff on the Old World website about Gislev. Yeah. 
Um, so it just I would came... say it's shelved for now, not not cancelled. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm I'm gonna guess over the next two to three years in this this current edition of Old World, we get these eight armies mm-hmm. out and built upon. Maybe then in the next edition they start to filter out. Depending on how well it does, maybe yeah. so. possibly all that sort of thing. Um, I mean, the rules. The rules, I would say, largely have been well received. Yeah, yeah I would so, say so. People seem to be. There's a flurry of battle reports out there of people like. Yeah, playing, I think the game sold it. well, from what I can gather. Well, it's consistently selling out. Here's stock. It's gone. Well, what, <laughs> do, what do we think uh, made them change their mind then? On whatever the planning was with these two factions being in it from the the plans perhaps that just over the past it. couple of years they've just got steadily more and more behind on things and i think that maybe it's been a knock-on effect towards all world perhaps i don't know mm. yeah i was going to say i think it may be that they had plans i mean bear in mind stuff like 10th edition 40k was supposed to have been released a couple of a year earlier than it was i mean when, when was the Everything first all was... world article when did it come out oh god 2000 and 2019, I think? It was before yeah, COVID, wasn't it? It's been five ago. years. We've basically been so five years waiting for When they were planning Old World and they were like, all right, Kislev, yay. They were not planning on a pandemic. <laughs> no, coming, exactly. So. And I mean, they've had some production issues as well with some of the other stuff that they've been making. They, yeah. The cost of internal shipping has Warehouse screwed issues, up. IT issues. There's, there's, let's just say there's been a lot of issues that they've had in terms of getting games out and that I think may have affected what they are planning on producing. Definitely. I would still, I agree with you guys, I think it would be nice if they could go and here's some legacy rules for using Kislev if you've got like an Empire army and you want to use them as part of an Empire army as they were back in 5th edition. I think the main reason people have been annoyed on socials again is just purely because they didn't get the rules to be able to at least use their old armies. Yeah. I think that's and I can understand that. Um and it's social media and people are genuinely always obviously. annoyed on social media. But but this oh, is stuff that we you know is is juicy to talk about on on uh, on here at least anyway because that uh, seems to be what a lot of people have been wanting to chat about. Uh, I think honestly the craziest theory I have seen on the socials this week about that announcement was people claiming it's Games Workshop being woke in a reaction to like the war in Ukraine. Oh, Kislev has oh, been yes. cancelled yeah, because of the war yeah. in Ukraine. I, whilst I would applaud any decision to support, you know, an opposition to aggression, to imperialist aggression, let me just say this: I don't think Games Workshop actively went. Hmm, let's make a business decision about shelving something that we've spent ages investing time and money in the creation of because of that mm. in our fantasy made-up world. I had seen that as I think it was in somebody's video actually, Ben. I'd yeah, seen I'm somebody chatting about it, and not uh, buying that. I there's a whole I, rabbit hole you do not want to go down. No, 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 no. Um, so no, I, 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 interesting to see what what will come of that in the future, and obviously for the legacy factions. But we'll throw us um, a curveball next week, mine, and it's in old world dog of war. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I mean, oh, yeah. my, my wallet would just kind of keel over, and a little kind of ghost <laughs> would come out of it if they released <laughs> dogs of war. I mean, I've got a dogs of war army already, but there is, I would quite happily. I've got lumping croups, halflings sat over there behind my laptop. But I would still quite have anything go, oh, new old world to be honest. Then I think you're just gonna no, no, no. But Dogs of War in particular, Dogs of War was so cool. I I played against a gorgeous Dogs of War army at my fifth edition event last year, and they are just such beautiful models. Um, I think it may have been was it? I think it may have been Jordan Sorcery had an interview with the Perry Twins about it recently, and he was asking them about the sort of the sculpting um, aesthetic behind it. And I'm sorry, I will shut up about this in a minute, but uh-huh. just they, they were talking about kind of all the research they'd done and how they wanted to make it like kind of Renaissance Italians, but not just immediately a copy of like um, if you were to just go buy a, a, a historical miniature from that era, you know, to buy from like just historical wargaming to give it that still Games Workshop fantasy twist. Like Warhammer, really Warhammer. Cool. Yeah. yeah, to be inspired by something in the real world, but to give it still something that fits the dynamic and aesthetic of the yeah. old world is gorgeous. And they really, really achieved that. Definitely. Um, all right, then. That, that kind of concludes the main news, really, from the week that we've been able to fit in, at the very least, anyway. <laughs> um, the next yeah. segment that we will try and get in most week, uh, for those who are listening, watching, um, we want to definitely answer your community questions, the viewers' questions and topics that they want to bring up. Um from the last week, it can be anything you kind of want us guys to discuss. 
so long as it's within reason. Um, we're going to redirect you, as I've said, links uh, in comments description to our Discord. I will put a new, uh, what, what I don't know what you'd kind of call it, section, segment on there that you can kind of post your questions and, uh, and topics for us to discuss on here, here each week. And uh, whatever we don't get in each week, we can make up uh, through ourselves. Because this is the first podcast, we're going to give you guys a chance until next week's uh, episode to get your uh, stuff into. Visit the Discord and go and drop in your questions, topics there for us, guys. That'd be yeah, awesome. I'll leave it in the comments on YouTube and let us know. Yeah, yeah even do that. Size right. It's not something that needs to be secretive, that one. So just drop it in the uh, on the comments on wherever you're watching, listening as do well. Do both! <laughs> Yes, do both, do it all. That's why we love that enthusiasm, definitely. Um, but this week, because we don't actually have the um, any questions this week from viewers, I thought we'd uh, fill in our own little game or, or thing that we could do. And as I'd said at the beginning, um, we've uh, all three of us come up with, and this was Sai's idea actually. So Sai, do, would you want to take us through kind of what your idea was for us to bring up? Holy Grail kits. Yeah, yeah. Well, it kind of ties into the. Um... What would you take to a desert island on, doesn't it? Mm. So yeah, what would be your top three holy, holy grail Warhammer kits? If you could, if no money was no object, and you could get your hands on it, and I think Ben's got one he's going to mention. Oh yeah, we were talking about it the other day. Um, yeah, if money was no object and you could buy any kit whatsoever, or you could get any kit whatsoever, what would you have? Anything mm. at all that Games Workshop have ever made, or in fact from any other game system, if you wanted, what would you have? Um, so for me, you had a TARDIS and a pocket full of coin. You could go back to whatever <laughs> era of Games Workshop. Time machine to go back to Games Workshop, 1992 or something. Yeah, I mean, there's there's so many. Uh, Grom the Paunch for me. I think if I could go back in time and get one off the shelf and just take it with me, I wouldn't paint it up in the old 90s colour scheme with the red wheels oh. and stuff like that. Or, may, or maybe a, a little bit of red wood. I don't know. Um, Titan Legions is another one. Um, Azag the Slaughterer. Mm. The, so now, the original Azag the Slaughterer with the kind of snake wyvern original. rather than the, the blocky original. one they released in 18. Absolutely, edition. yeah, yeah. The original Bjorn fell handed. Oh, I could go on. Okay. Ben, any uh, uh, thoughts? I do indeed. I've got a top three on this. <laughs> I, I Mordheim as well. Mordheim sealed. That's fine. Yeah, no. <laughs> I've, I've thought about that, a sealed copy of Mordheim. <laughs> I'm still hopeful that, because this year I think is like the 25th anniversary of the release of Mordheim, I am hopeful Games Workshop might do like a made-to-order or something of that. That would be amazing. I know Nick Baton posted earlier today on Twitter, like they're doing a, 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 a studio nostalgic Mordheim campaign at the moment because he posted oh. a picture of his converted... Check out his, his converted Marienburg captain. It's gorgeous. It's like the Blood Bowl Griff Overworld model with some stuff added to it. Um, the... <laughs> Dieter Helsnicht model, the metal necromancer on a manticore from like 4th edition Undead. I, I have a, a deep craving for that model. I'm gonna, what, I, I keep looking at it on eBay. I'm gonna, at some point, I'm gonna cave and just get that model. I've written old world lists using the the, the, leg, the legacy rules for like uh, a list that features a necromancer on a manticore because you can take that under the legacy list as your general just so I can do a Dieter Helsnicht list. <laughs> um, I'm that obsessed with it. The the second one is um, a M a retribution class battleship for Battlefleet oh, Gothic. Battlefleet Gothic. So yeah. I've got an Imperial fleet for Battlefleet Gothic, but it's mostly cruisers and escorts. It's like swords and cobras because I like torpedoes, and then I think four of the like plastic cruisers that you got in the Battlefleet Gothic box. But I never got the metal battleship, and they go for about a hundred and something quid on eBay on wow. general. I just can't justify that no. expense for a model that was like 20 quid when it came out yeah. but that's the one that has the batteries all down the side that that's, one. The one. Yep. that's the one yeah it's just like firepower 14 or something down either side it's just you just it is a gunship you just drift when you mentioned it earlier I, looked really it up, I was looking at it and drooling over it it's a gorgeous chunk of lead and i, I don't have one and that's one of those ones again where i can look at it and go yeah i really if i could add a battleship to my imperial fleet that's what i would add the third and final hobby holy grail is yeah, there you are. That's the picture. Hey. <laughs> it's like all the guns down the side, designed by Dave Andrews as well, um, who did some gorgeous models for Battlefleet Gothic back in the day. Um, but no, the third and final one is, and this is one that I, I'm not, I, I want, I, I'll say this, and then it'll save me having to buy it because somebody else will go find it. There is one of these available on Facebook Marketplace at the moment that keeps popping up as an advert on my Facebook feed, and each week the guy selling it drops the price by like ten quid. 
And I said to myself, if it hits 70, I'm just going to cave and buy it. I, I can't believe I missed this back in the day when they were selling it in stores. And I kick myself for not having got it. It is the Games Workshop produced resin three piece gateway to Helm's Deep. It came three pieces with like felt on the bottom and it had a working gate and little kind of murder holes at the top that flipped up and down. And it made essentially the curve of the keep at the center of Helm's Deep. That's the boy. It's a bit um, small, but you can see it on there, guys. <laughs> oh no! I, I, I literally each week this thing pops up on my Facebook feed, and it's like the guy hasn't sold it yet because it's got a few minor imperfections on the one he's selling. I need to speak to my, one of my friends, Simon, who I, I play most of my games with. Simon at Pushing Pigment. He might have this. He's really, got a lot of Lord of the Rings terrain. You've been called out on the podcast, Simon. Of, just, <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Did you say your mate was called Simon? Sorry. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I said he's been called out on the podcast now. He's got a, uh, <laughs> he's got a supply. <laughs> but yeah, um, that, that is my, my three Holy Grail kits. I had to think about it a little bit because there's a few other models that I had on the list, like the Halfling Hotbot and stuff, that I've since managed to get. Those are three that I don't have and I, I have a great and burning need for. <laughs> nice. Okay. Well, for me... I also will give a shout to the Mordheim box set, uh, Ben. Um, that was also on my kind of uh, thoughts, if you like, for this one. Um, I've always I've played Mordheim, um, but not obviously with the official set, and mm -hmm. it's still I think my favourite um, box game that uh, or, or rule book that uh, rules should I say that. Um, Games Workshop have done. Uh, I'd love more time. But, uh, Thomas Pyramid obviously... did an amazing job on that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the the box set, obviously, I wouldn't have been my time uh, if I could get a hold of one, definitely. Uh, would, be, would be uh, something I'd love to get my hands on uh, just for purely... I'd love to even just have the box, to be honest, behind me or something. So if I ever get it, guys, I'll put it... <laughs> build yeah, a shelf just for it. I love that box. Gorka yeah. Walker. Man of War. Just some of those boxes in the background. Exactly. Um, so that was my first one. Second choice, if I can also get an image up of it, is uh, Battle for Skull Pass. Um, big box set, obviously with the Orcs your, and Goblins. Your Desert uh, Island set. Goblins. Yeah, and the Dwarves. Um, my favourite mixed uh, two army set, if you like, uh, ever. My favourite Warhammer Fantasy thing that came out. Uh, what edition would this have been? Seventh. Seventh. Um, yeah, seventh edition. Yeah, so, and I I, I think, Sai, we, we had a discussion about this a little while back, about how much these are going for. Maybe a couple of hundred quid? You'd yeah, I mean, there's quite a few them. on um, eBay, if you have a look now. I mean, there's been a lot sold over the past couple of weeks. Okay. Um, I think it's over 100 miniatures, isn't it? See, there's all the gobbles. Yeah. Um, and then you got the dwarves weren't as good. The dwarves weren't as good sculpting-wise, I don't think, as the gobbles. The, oh, the, yeah, the, the gobbos well were definitely the best in the set, but um, I always remember. I I'm sure there were before this, but I remember this being one of the first sets that had those kind of like easier to piece together models um, uh, that I recall getting my hands on at least. I've, anyway, I've got one of the goblins somewhere. I'm just trying to find it. Mm. The so for fantasy, yes, yeah, because the sixth finish and starter box, the one that came immediately before this, was multi-part glued together like spearmen like the ones that i've used to make how yeah. it is um the 40k side of things the fourth edition battle for the crag uh starter box is probably the first push fit set right, okay. that games which did as a starter box which would have come out just before this one i think because it would have been third edition 40k sixth edition fantasy fourth edition 40k seventh edition fantasy that was kind of yep. the, the the rhythm of it and that one came with the one that came with the kind of push together tactical squad and gene stealers and the crashed aquila that's it yeah which was as well which i love not cheap no that. they did that as a, was it like the christmas as a made to order didn't they yeah it was um so you it's they kind of in, said that you're going to get the box again but it wasn't the box it didn't come with a uh, Battle from a Crab box. It was just one of the gen uh, standard mail order boxes. You didn't get any rule books, rules. any paperwork or anything like that. You literally just got the plastic that was in the box. Which is a shame. Got on the paunch! And in Grom red! Paunch, as he should be! Uh, for an, for any With Nibbler as well. The original Grom the Paunch. Yeah! <laughs> Such a cool model. 
Um, it's cool completely I, really I didn't manage to get size up, so I thought I'd get it up there first because it's such a fun model. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, it is awesome. Well, I've, I've, got got the Titan, well. I've got the Titan Legions, so um, cool, I'll that. share that just for anybody who is actually. Yeah. What an awesome It's just the Mega Gargoyles. No, it's the, I mean, the Mega Gargoyle is cool, but that Emperor and Class the, Titan. Emperor with, Class Titan, yeah. The, the, the Bastion legs with people like standing on the steps and the sh- stuff. Nice. It's so yeah, cool. the artwork. If you look at the artwork, there's people like running out of the the feet to defend the the Titan. So my it's old boss incredible. at the Manchester store actually made a to scale Emperor class Titan. It filled the entirety wow. of his window display at the Games Workshop Arndale Centre, and yeah, I mean, it had lights and stuff inside the head and stuff as well. But it was amazing. The legs had like seen... Marines pouring out of the Bastion. A few people haven't done like conversions and things with these. Um with those uh, very impressive I remember having a game of this when it first came out with a guy from school because we were in secondary school at the time and I was the orcs I didn't know what I was doing I didn't know the rules it was, it, well it was, it was similar to Space Marine weren't it it wasn't that yeah. much different so I kind of knew what I was doing but I didn't know what everything was going on with the because mass- you have massive hit charts for the Gargans and the Titan and stuff and his Titan he lost all his knights quite early on his Titan just annihilated everything every orc wagon Two, the two Mega Gargants both ended up going. It just destroyed the entire game. It was unstoppable. It but is it funny. Yeah, like the it biggest, was, it most powerful thing it. in 40k, though. Definitely. Um, okay, well, that leads us into um, what we're hopefully going to try and do every week if it works. Um, and that will be uh, a little game of Warhammer 20 questions. <laughs> and uh, what we're going to do with this uh, for the viewers, listeners, uh, if this works out every week, and what I would like you to do is get an email into me because uh, it has to be secretive. The guys can't know, obviously, what the answer is to Warhammer 20 questions every week. Post it on so the please... Discord where we can see. <laughs> yes, yeah, so if you post it on Discord or, or comments on YouTube, that's real nice and thanks for the effort, but it, it, we're not going to be able to use it. Um, <laughs> so email me. I'll put um, my own email so that the guys can't see it. Uh, hmm. Wargamingluke at gmail.com. I'll put that in the description in case you forget. Email me uh, your uh, kind of Warhammer unit or character from the law that you'd like me to uh, put forward to the guys for Warhammer 20 questions and let us know what your name is, where you're from maybe um, and maybe why you've given us this maybe it's your favourite character or unit from Warhammer. Yeah, it can be from any setting as well yeah. So. Yeah. See if you can yeah, outwit us Yeah, see, it's, but that's going to be the idea each week I think. I'm going to start oh. easy this week so that everybody at home can have a go as well. Um, hopefully easily get uh, not easily, but you know, uh, get to this one for this week's. But we definitely want to be challenging uh, Ben and Sai uh, over the week, so uh, do send in your suggestions. <laughs> um, but for this week's uh, rules as well, I'll just set down a, a few little rules that uh, will follow for this one. You're going to get 19 questions, guys, or up to 19 questions, and your 20th question will be your guess. Mm-hmm. Um, if you guess wrong, you lose, and I'll let you know what the actual answer is, uh, or who it actually is that you're after. Uh, if you definitely come to it way before that, which I'd hope you will do on this week's, then uh, decide between yourselves, obviously, and uh, we'll see if you've got it right. I'm also going to say um, can't ask about letters or anything like that in the names or the u- unit name, whatever so, it'll be. It's the last practice, be... you've got to answer yes or no. Yes, mm-hmm. basically. And, uh, and yeah, good point. I'll obviously be answering yes or no as best I can, unless I need to add a little bit to it here and there to kind of send you in the right direction because things could get a bit hairy, obviously. Okay, who's going to ask the first question? <laughs> right, Ben, who's going first, me or you? Uh, okay, well, you're, you're on top, so you go first. Uh, okay, uh, do you reside in the 41st millennium? I do. Okay, okay. okay. So, yeah. not Fantasy Rage of Sigma. Uh, would we find you in the Xenos section of the Games Workshop website? No. Okay. So, okay. some form of human. Would you be considered to be genetically engineered? Yes. Okay, okay. so, but it's Space Marine or Custodes, we need to know. Yeah. yeah. Do you have an, uh, an overbearing fondness for gold? <laughs> no. <laughs> not Auric Goldfinger. Not Custodes or Celestial Lions, then? No, not Custodes. <laughs> uh, do you wear power armor? Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. I do. Okay. That's five questions. So it's also easy, it's not any of the scout characters as well. Uh, 
because they wear scout armor. Um, do you like? Do you wear lots of blue? No, I don't. Okay, so it's not one of the many ultramarine characters. <laughs> do you like the taste of blood? <laughs> <laughs> no, mm, blood. Okay, not blood angels <laughs> or successors thereof. <laughs> or, or, or corn berserkers. Actually, we should narrow that down. Um, yeah. <laughs> would you be described as loyal to the emperor? I would indeed. Okay, so it's, it isn't a chaos. <laughs> <laughs> How many questions is that? That's eight. Okay, it's about eight. Okay, so we're halfway through, basically, no, nearly halfway. Near through. enough. Yeah. Yep. Would you be considered a leader amongst your peers? I would. Okay. Oh, do do you like wolves? No. <laughs> no, no, you wouldn't. Not Wolfy but wolf face. No, he you wouldn't, wouldn't like. He wouldn't like wolf, wolf lover. Let's go opposite. Um, do you like do you like swords with wings? <laughs> I do. Okay, okay, yeah. So loyal characters from that. Uh, do you have? Uh, does you do you have someone who carries your helmet around for you? No. Okay. It's the leader. Winged sword. I think that's Would you? 13. Do you wear armor that's bone colored? That's what colored? <laughs> bone colored. <laughs> I don't technically wear a helmet. No, no, armor. He asked specifically armor. Oh, armor. Is his Is armor, your armor bone, bone colored? Bone coloured. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, okay so, so, so not the death wing. My armour is not, no. Uh, is your armour black? It is. That's 15 to my. Okay, case. so it could be a chaplain, it could be Raven Wing. Hmm. <laughs> Do you like to cry, repent? <laughs> <laughs> repent. <laughs> repent. Um, I don't believe so. This is my law knowledge as well, though, shame, so but no, I don't believe so. Okay. Okay. Um It could be Ezekiel, he wears blue armor. I knew you asked about no, blue, didn't we you? We asked about blue, see, so it's not it'll be a librarian it's definitely either. Definitely black armor. Black armor. Do you go really fast everywhere? I do. Aha! Seventeen. Should go maybe zero again. No, well, hang on. Oh, we've got a couple more questions. <laughs> Let's narrow it down. Yeah, right, you've okay. got until the twentieth question, so you might as well narrow do it down. Do you ride an ancient piece of technology? I do. Do you have a great big black sword? I do. I think we may. Do you want to make the guess, Sai? Si? Yeah, I'll go for it. Are you Samuel, Master of the Raven Wing? I am indeed, Samuel. Woo! We got that. <laughs> nice one. We got that. That was I close. Think that, I think that was in 18 or 19. I could have lost count yeah. one or two there, but you did definitely get it. I think I they know, toyed with you at 17. the end there. We, we got there. Yes, we did indeed. I'm glad. At least you gave us an easy one to start off with anyway. <laughs> yeah, it was good fun in the end, but... Uh, well done, guys. You managed to get it this week. I might keep track each week if we carry on doing this as to what you got it in. Um, and then I'll get I'll get out an average maybe at the end of the year to see how how many you actually got. Uh, we can earn more hammer points. Yes, indeed. <laughs> um, but that is it for our Warhammer twenty questions for this week, guys. Um, just before we close out this first ever uh, Warhammer podcast, which has been good fun. Uh, just uh, kind of end of podcast housekeeping. Just to remind you guys uh, where you can go for different things. The link tree link down below. Uh, go and find our new TikTok, Spotify to listen to the podcast. Make sure you subscribe to us here on the channel and then throw us a like and leave us lovely comments. Let us know uh, if you've well. enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, and what we're going to be doing, uh, as I said at the beginning, I would let you know what the prize giveaway is uh, to celebrate our first ever episode. Uh, I'm going to personally be giving away um, a drum roll. A... Are you ready? <laughs> drum roll. I'm going to be giving away uh, viewers' choice of uh, your Kill Team, Warcry Warband, or Necromunda Ooh. gang that you'd like. So any of your choosing, I will uh, get get that for you, send it out to you wherever you are in the world. Um, we'll get that out to you. And all you have to do is go over to uh, a post that I'm going to put up uh, straight away with this video on 
the Twitters, uh, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you'll be on social media for you to share and like um, or repost, retweet, whatever it'll be, whatever platform you're on. I love how um, we all call it X, Twitter and not X. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. I, I refuse to call it X. Um, uh, Sai and Ben, I'm sure, will retweet or share that post Indeed. as well so you guys can find it on their socials as well. Um, all you have to do, retweet, share it, like the post, and you'll be in with a chance of, of winning a next week's podcast is when we'll reveal I'll, I'll probably do some sort of generator on here um generate the name see we get up uh, to win that one closing out now just thank the obviously all the hosts that we've had on uh, and where you can find them so uh before we do close out uh, ben since you mentioned where can people find you uh, socials or channels etc i'm on basically everything so in terms of my channel on twitter is 90 percent geek nine zero the word percent geek, like it says right there at the bottom of my yep, page. you've got up on there. Uh, that is my Twitter handle. That is my blue sky. That is my threads. That is my Instagram. That is, I've got a Facebook page that nobody has liked yet. I'm <laughs> over on Facebook. I'll like it. I'll, There's I'll no like content it. on there. I, I, I put like my short on there. That's it. So I need to put more content on that because I'm putting it all on the channel at the moment. But yeah, no, that's where you can find me. Awesome. Uh, sorry. Yeah, you can find me on YouTube, um, youtube.com, at Hobby Waffle. Like Ben said, you can see at the bottom of the screen there, it's got my name, at Hobby Waffle. I've got the same username on Twitter and on Instagram as well. I don't have um, Blue Sky or whatever you just called it. I'll have to have a look at that. Um, also on my YouTube page as well, if you have a look on the main page, there's links to my various social media. Ah. So yeah, you can find me there. I'm still, still putting regular videos on my channel, as is Ben. So yeah, but uh, right. that's... Awesome. Uh, as for myself, I'll be on here for the for the time being. Uh, I might well put out my own videos as the time goes on, but at the moment, the focus is the podcast. <laughs> to be able to prep for it each week uh, as we go along, we'll see how we go with it. Um, otherwise, just search Wargaming Luke on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I'm over there, guys. Um, but yeah, that's it for our first ever episode of Morehammer. Thanks so much uh, to both of you for joining. Um, and until next week, guys, uh, as always, happy Wargaming. Yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Oh, and, uh, cheers, don't guys. forget to leave us a comment. Let me know. What, let us know what you thought. Cheers, guys. Bye bye. See ya.